Good afternoon, Groovy Citizens, and happy Motivational Monday to each and every one of you. I hope you all have had a wonderful weekend. I certainly did. Honey, let me tell y'all, yesterday, church was just awesome. And I please charge it to my head and not my heart, but I forgot to write down the guest preacher's name. But when I tell y'all he came and tore it up, he came and tore it up. So if you follow me on Facebook, you can go to my page and click on the service because I did share the, share it there. Or you can go and find us on YouTube, Metropolitan Baptist Church, and watch it there. But when I tell you that was a word, honey, believe me, that was a word that will take me through this week and probably the rest of the month. You hear what I'm saying? So anyway, I hope you all had a wonderful weekend. And like I said, they always go by quick, but you know what? They come back around quick. Today is Monday. Before you know it, I'll be saying it's Wednesday the middle of the week and we'll be back to the weekend again now today's to oh before i go into today's topic i don't know where you live but here in the dmv area it's been very windy as a matter of fact this morning i noticed the tree in the yard we have one of the the um, the metal you know spiral trees well actually there's two of them in the yard and in between excuse me in between is three gift boxes and so the bigger one, the smaller one has stakes holding in the ground. The bigger one doesn't. And I thought, well, how in the world am I going to keep this thing from falling over? Because on my way out to do this video, it was laying over and then it gets tangled up. So then I remember, y'all, I have these heavy duty stakes. So as soon as I'm done with this video, I'm going out there to figure out how I can stake that thing down and not have to keep coming out here picking it up. And even, even as I said that, I'm looking across the street and my neighbor, he has three gift boxes in his yard and they're kind of strewn all about. Cause like I said, the wind has been pretty rough today. It's 45 degrees and, and they did say it was gonna be windy. Now on the fence, I have the garland hanging on the fence. I need to go and hang that back up. But you know what? I ain't gonna fool with that today just because it's gonna blow down again. So let's jump into this video because Y'all, this is one that has been speaking to me for a minute. And I didn't want to talk about it, but we're going to get into it. And today's topic is how to tell if they really care about you. How to tell if they really care about you. Now, I'll tell you why this topic is so right on time. Because we are nearing the end of 2023, as you know. And in a few weeks, we're going to be yelling, Happy New Year, and we'll be in 2024. And what I don't want is for m myself, but you all as well, to take anything from 2023 that needs to be left here into 2024. Now, for some of you, that's going to mean bad financial habits. Some of you, it's going to mean procrastination. Some of you, it's going to mean some people. Yes, I said it. Some of you are going to have to leave some people in 2023. I'm not saying you can't love them. You can't care about them, but they just cannot be a part of your inner circle and they just cannot be a part of your life. Maybe you're dating them. I, I, I dare I say marriage because that's a whole nother issue in and of itself, but, but you get what I'm saying. <clears throat> so there are several ways that you can tell if someone really cares about you or if they are just using you. And here are just a few. This is not a complete list in any way, shape, or form. And as I go through this list, I'm actually going to give you some worst case scenarios because sometimes things are not always what they appear to be. So number one, pay attention to their actions. See, I'm one of these people, your actions speak way louder than your words because a lot of times people will say one thing but their actions show you something completely different. I'm going off your actions to heck with what you say. So ask yourself if they consistently make an effort to spend time with you and show you that they care, or do they only reach out to you when they need something? Mm. And it doesn't always have to be money, okay? Now I'll let your imagination do its thing, but if you have people in your life they never, ever, ever reach out to you unless they want something. That's a problem. That, that is a huge problem in my book because that tells me that they don't really value that relationship the way you do. 
or they don't care about you in the way that you care about them. Number two, are they genuinely interested in your life? Do they ask questions about what's going on in your life and really listen to you? Let me put a pin right there. It's not just about asking questions. Are they really listening to you? Because we all have experienced somebody that said, girl, what's going on in your life? And you go, well, you know, I'm doing this, this, and this. And they're looking at their watch or they're digging in their phone or they're looking all around, waving at somebody over there. I wouldn't wave at anybody. I'm just, that was my example. And they're not paying attention to a word you're saying. <laughs> Excuse me, y'all, my sciences are draining. They only asked you because they felt like that was the right thing to do, but they don't really care. So when I ask you, always know this, <clears throat> always know this about me. When I ask you how things are going in your life, what are you up to? I'm asking because I truly want to know. I'm genuinely concerned about you and what's going on in your life. And I'm going to sit and give you my full undivided attention. And I'm going to ask questions nine times out of 10. Okay. Just know that. But I am, I'm giving you my full time and attention. I'm not asking you how are things, what's going on in your life because I don't have anything else better to do because I always have something else that I need to be doing. I'm asking you because I truly care or do you, or, or do they, excuse me, only want to talk about themselves and their interests. And we all know people like that. You know, they spend the whole conversation talking about them, what's going on in their life, who they're dating, where they've been, what they have going on, whoop -de -woo, and haven't asked you about your life at all. And that's this is what you do when that happens. You sit there and you give them your undivided attention. And you might even give them a little smile if you want to. And then when you, as soon as you get that break, cause you'll get a little break in there, you go, you know what, that is great. I am so glad to hear that you have, and read back some of the, the not read back, give back to them some of what they've been giving you. I'm so glad that you have this trip coming up. You have this new group that you're doing. Your kids are doing great. Your husband's doing great. Your significant other's doing great. Girl, let me tell you what's going on in my life. Cause sometimes you're gonna have to jump in there and have your say chances are they're going to look at you like i wasn't done talking or they're going to give you that look that says i really don't care it's all right jump in there anyway or if you don't want to do that you could just let them have their say and then give them back what they give you see i'm all about giving you what you give me if, if I'm talking to you and I see that you keep looking at your watch, that tells me you have some place to be. So as you're rambling on about, excuse me, about your life, I'm going to look at my watch and say, you know what, girl, it's, it's getting late. I really have to be going because I've got to pick the kids up from daycare. Now, I do not have kids in daycare, but I'm just using that as, as an example. Whatever it is that you need to do, give them back what they're giving you. Stop giving them your undivided attention when they don't give you theirs. Okay, that's all I'm saying. Because what happens is you get upset and then you go home and you're frustrated and you call one of your other good, good girlfriends or one of your guy friends or, or tell your significant other, your spouse, you know, I ran into so-and-so and all they did was talk about themselves. They didn't even ask me how I'm doing. Or when I started talking about myself, they just cut me off. And my whole thing is this, stop giving them your time. Your time is valuable. If to no one else, it is to you. Stop giving away your time. Number number three, are they, how are they treating you? And I need you all to really listen to this one. How are they treating you? Are they consistently treating you with kindness and respect or do they have a tendency to be rude, dismissive, or abrasive? Are they physically or and or mentally abusive towards you let me say this a person cannot truly care about you if they are physically and or mentally abusive towards you they cannot you cannot tell me that you care about someone that you have to put your hands on. You cannot tell me that you care about someone that you have to verbally abuse. And when I say verbally abuse, I'm talking about you're const they're constantly yelling at you. They're, they're putting you down. They never have anything nice to say to you and or about you. That is abuse. And I know people may, I don't. 
but I know people make excuses. Well, you know, uh, they're just stressed. They have a lot going on at work and oh honey, they don't mean anything by it. No, stop doing that. There are a lot of women, I'm speaking specifically about women right now, but there are a lot of women who are not here right now because they kept telling themselves that lie because they didn't want to be alone or they were afraid to leave that person and that person eventually put them in the grave. So it is so important that you look at those signs and that you cut them off. Now I know what you're saying. You're saying, well, Michelle, you know, it only happened once. Well, if it happened once, it can happen again. That's my thinking. If it happened once, it can happen again. So let me just keep it real. I love the Lord with all my heart. I am saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, just like a lot of other people. But I promise you, if you put your hands on me, it's going to be a huge problem. It is going to be a huge problem. And, and nine times out of 10, I might end up in jail because I'm gonna try to bust your head to the white meat. You hear what I'm saying? And I'm gonna do it in the name of Jesus because you need to keep your hands to yourself. I know the Bible says that we ought to turn the other cheek. I do. But when it comes to that, that that's a sore spot, spot in my heart that I just do not take lightly because I've seen too many people go through being physically and or mentally abusive and it is hard to watch now i can say this in, in in my family i've not seen it but i've seen it with other people i remember being in high school a young lady that went to high school with us because she was uh her she had she was light-skinned so you know on light-skinned people bruises show up a lot easier than they do on someone say my complexion not that i don't bruise because i do but she would come to, to school with a black eye or bruises on her arm or her legs, any place that was visible and always had an excuse. Oh, I was playing with my nephew and I fell. Oh, my nephew left his toys out and I tripped over it. And people bought it. We all did, I did. And then we found out later on that the guy that she was dating and we all went to high school together was physically abusive to her and she loved this man so much that she put up with that abuse and that's sad because do you think that man respects you he doesn't do you think that woman respects you she doesn't so you're staying with somebody that doesn't even respect you well they clearly don't respect you if they're putting their hands on you i'm just saying but all i'm saying is be careful of that. Be mindful of that. I'm not saying, because you're going to have to make that decision on your own. I'm not saying don't give them another chance. I am saying use discernment if you choose to. Me personally, I'm ready to cut it off. I'm not going down that road. I've been down that road before and I said, Lord, I will never do it again. Because again, my mind says if you do it once, you'll do it again. But that's that choice is up to you. But I'm just saying right now. If you are in a relationship where someone is physically and or mentally being abusive towards you and you don't know how to get out of that relationship, reach out to me. I have a link in the description that's, that's called Linktree. Click on that and you have all my contact information there. Reach out to me. Let's talk because you don't need to stay in a relationship like that because things can end up very grave for you. Oh, let me say this, either for you or for that individual. Real quick, y'all remember that movie, The Burning Bed? And I know I'm dating myself. That movie actually came out, I think, I think I was, I don't, know if I, I don't even know if I was born yet, but anyway, I've seen the movie. And The Burning Bed is about Fair Fawcett. She plays the main character. And this movie, mind you, is based on a true story. And she plays the main character who's, husband he drinks a lot he's a heavy drinker and when he gets to drink it oh honey he gets abusive his mouth gets foul and he gets to using the hands and she's got two daughters and that was back during a time when most women did not work so she couldn't leave him because she's got two kids to take care of and she had no way of supporting herself so she stayed and finally one day she had enough and when he came home he was drunk and he was doing his usual being physically and verbally abusive 
He went upstairs, laid across the bed, passed out, knocked out, just out for the count, okay? So what she did was she fed the girls their dinner. If I remember the movie correctly, she went outside, put them in the pickup truck, strapped them in, and she said, I'll be right back. She went back in the house. She went upstairs, tucked her husband in nice and tight all the way around. And then she doused the bed with, with uh, gasoline. And she lit a match, threw it on there, and girlfriend left the house, got in that tr pickup truck, drove off and never looked back. Now, she ended up serving time. Like I said, this is a real, a true story. And she ended up serving time and and on one hand, I do understand, no, we cannot just kill people because we don't like the way they treat us. But on the other hand, this woman was fed up. What else was she supposed to do? You can only push people so far. So in order that you don't get to that point, I'm telling you, just leave, okay? Let me move on. Mm, number four, is that where we are? Yes, number four. Is there balance with their giving and taking. Are you giving more to the relationship while they only take or are things 50-50? And when I say give and take, I'm talking about physically, I'm talking about mentally, I'm talking about financially, every way you can think of. If you find that you are constantly giving and that person is only taking, that's not a relationship you need to be in. Why are you there? I mean, really, why are you there? Have the conversation first and say, hey, you know what? I noticed that I'm doing more giving in this relationship. We need to to, to work this out. And and if, the, if we can't work it out, then I'm gonna have to just go on about my business. You've given them warning. If they don't change, cut it off and move on. You don't need somebody that's only gonna take because that's like having another child to deal with. And my, my daughter's grown. I'm not taking care of no grown man. Number five, trust your instincts. If things don't feel right, they probably aren't. You may not want to face the truth, but there are times when you have to listen to your gut instincts and your heart. And this is where prayer comes in handy. I don't know about you, but I pray about everything. I've heard people say, well, Michelle, I wouldn't, why would you pray about that? God didn't have time to deal with minor issues. Yes, he does. God says that we can come to him in prayer about everything. He didn't say only come to him in prayer about big things. He said we can come to him in prayer about everything. If you, and I said all of that to say this, if you are in a relationship of any type, it can be a friendship, it can be a romantic relationship, a work relationship, it doesn't matter. Pray about it. Ask God, is this where you really need to be? And if it isn't, I need you to get up out of there quick, fast, and in a hurry. I'm going to share this with you. I've shared this before, but if you're new to watching my channels, you probably never heard of, heard this story. But there was a lady that I met when I was going to PG Community College working on my associate's degree. And this was on a Wednesday because it was our three-hour class night, and it was our sociology class. And she, I, met this one, I met this woman. She was in the class. And I always sat in the row by the door because me, when class is over, I'm trying to make my exit. I had already worked eight hours a day, and now I'm sitting in class for three okay I'm trying to get home but anyway I, I always sit in the row by the door and this woman always sat across the room in the row by the window and so a couple of times I saw her and so excuse me one day class was over I ain't gonna lie I was tired and that voice said wait for her outside the door outside of the class and pray for her I said, Lord, do you really want me to do that? Because I am tired. Right now, I don't feel like praying for anybody. I can barely pray for myself. That's how tired I was that day. Because at that time, I was getting up and I was at work at six in the morning. And so I heard it again because I was thinking, okay, I'll do it next Wednesday. But I heard that voice a couple more times, actually. So I said, all right, Lord, I will do it. Class ended, I went outside and I waited. And it took her about mm, five minutes or so, and then she came out. And she was like one of the last people that came out of the classroom, if I remember correctly. And so I said, excuse me. I said, my name is Michelle. I said, what's your name? And she told me, I, I don't remember now, but she told me her name. And I said, you know, I'm not quite sure why or what's going on. I said, but 
during the during class, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and, and told me to pray for you. I said, so do you mind if I pray for you? She said, oh no, absolutely not. And so, you know, I had my bag on my shoulder, so I got her by the hand and I began to pray for her. Because like I said, I didn't know why I was praying for her, but I did, I did as God told me to do. So I prayed for her and then I, I ended it as always in the name of Jesus. I ask these in all things, amen. And she said, amen. And as she said that, I looked up at her and she had tears coming down her eyes. And I said, oh no, I said, what's wrong? And this woman, she laid out her life. And in a span of a few minutes, she told me everything. And I mean, I just, my heart hurt for her. It really did. I had to fight back the tears of my own. She said that she had been married. She had two, you know, teenage children. I, I think they were preteens at that time. I think they were preteen at that time. But anyway, she had two children, son and a daughter, and she was married. She told me about how her husband said, hey, you know what? Because he wanted to go to school to be a doctor. So they, and they both wanted to go to school. So he said, well, I tell you what, let me get my degree first and then you can get yours because his was going to take a little longer, of course. And so he went on through school, got his bachelor's, his doctorate and all that other good stuff. And then when it was time for her to go to school, it was never the right time. It was always something. So, you know, she's been the dutiful wife and she said, okay. And she said to her gut feeling kept telling her that something wasn't right. And so one day he leaves the house, she gets in her car and she follows him at a safe distance, of course, but she follows him. And it goes to show you how people don't really pay attention because if he had been paying attention, he would have noticed this car making every turn that he did, he made. But his mind was focused on where he's going. I'm gonna tell you where. And so finally, he goes into this neighborhood uh, in Annapolis. I, I'm, I live probably about mm, 45 minutes or so from Annapolis, but she goes, follows him to this neighborhood in Annapolis. And again, she's keeping a nice distance. And he pulls into this driveway and she pulls down enough where she can see him, but he doesn't notice her. And he gets out of the car. There's a woman holding a baby standing on the porch and she's happy to see him. So he walks up, picks up the baby. You know how you do, throw your baby up in the air. And he hugs and kisses the woman and they go in the house. I said, and what did you do? She said, I did the only thing I could do. I said, what was that? <clears throat> she said, I sat in my car and I cried and I cried and I cried. Finally, it took her 30 minutes to get herself together and she left. She drove back home, cried all the way home. She got home, you know, got dinner together, got, you know, and, and made sure her kids did the homework and all of that. And when her husband came home later on, he acted like nothing happened. He acted like everything was all good. Hey, how's your day? You know, making small talk. I said, honey, let me tell you something. I'm just not wired that way because there's no way, no way in this lifetime or any other that I could have gone on with that that charade of a conversation because I it couldn't have been me. Mm, I'd have been all over him like stink on doo-doo. You hear what I'm saying? And so she didn't say anything <clears throat> and she waited. She waited a couple of, I think she waited a couple of months and then finally she confronted him about it. And he said, you know what? I'm glad it's out in the open. So now I don't have to keep sneaking around. And he told her that he hadn't in fact met the other woman and she had to ask, is that baby yours? And he said, yes. And so he said, now that it's out in the open, this is what we're gonna do. He wanted a divorce. She could keep the house and he was going to be staying with his new woman. Now here was the problem. She couldn't afford that mortgage by herself. She had a job, but she couldn't afford the mortgage by herself. So she ended up selling the house, which worked out in her favor because it gave her some money. She was able to go to school, but it just disrupted her life so much. Never in a million years had she expected for things to turn out that way. And I thought, Lord have mercy. And it broke my heart. The more she talked, 
the more broken inside I was. I remember driving home and my house from PG Community College is probably about 10 minutes. And I mean, I, it just, my heart just hurt so bad as I drove home. And I never forgot that. Like I said, I don't remember her name, but I remember the story. And I told you all that story because I need you to make sure you trust your instincts in a relationship. If you have, now some people are just, you know, some people just assume the worst because that's just who they are. But I'm talking about if you really have that instinct. See, when you, you get on the same page with God and you pray and you ask God to show you what you need to know. Every now and then I say, all right, Lord, I need you to show me what I'm missing. I need you to tell me what I need to know because I don't want to go through this life even though I wear glasses, blind as a bat, you hear me? And so you ask God to show you what it is that you need to know, and he's gonna show you. If you're in a relationship with someone who has a whole relationship with somebody else, he's gonna show you that. Now, here's the thing, here's the thing. When you ask God to reveal things to you, you have to be ready to receive them. And that's the problem for a lot of people. You ask God to show you things, but you're not really ready to receive them. So when he shows it to you, you, you can't handle it because you weren't ready for it. So put your big girl or your big boy underwear on and, and, and strap in. So when you ask God to reveal whatever that thing is that you need to know about, he can reveal it. Now, on the, on the other hand, I need you all to stop going through life thinking negatively. Some people have gone through so many bad relationships, depending, and it doesn't even matter what kind of relationship it is, that when a good one comes along, they have a hard time believing that that person is truly and genuinely loving and caring. They, they always think there's an ulterior motive. I need you all to stop thinking that way. And I know it's going to be hard, but take it one day at a time and stop thinking that way because there are truly some good people out here. So here's your takeaway. Ultimately, it's important to always remember that genuine care and concern for other people, for the other person <clears throat> involves a willingness to put in effort and be there for them consistently, not just when it's convenient for them or when there's something to be gained from it. So that's your takeaway. Everything I share with you will be in the description box. But but I just want you to, to just think about that. And, and same for you. Make sure you're consistently being there for someone. And it's not just them always giving and you're always taking. And you only go to them when you need something. Don't do that. Because nobody deserves that. It's not a good feeling. And if you I always tell people, if it's something that you wouldn't like, why would you do it to other people? And yet people do it all the time. So I need you to really think about that. And, and wherever you need to make changes, now is the time to make the change. Because people, everybody deserves to be treated with respect. You as well as the other person. And here's what I'm gonna leave you with. If you are with someone, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're with someone and you know that you don't really want to be with them and you're only with them because they, they're constantly giving you stuff, buying you stuff, taking you places that you can't afford, giving you money, or whatever the case may be. If you know you don't really want to be in that relationship, do that person a favor and leave them alone. Leave them alone for somebody else to come along that truly wants to be with them. Stop taking up their time with your non-sequential BS and you know that you don't really want to be there. You're just there because of what you can get from them. Don't do that. Because here's the thing. You will reap what you sow. And just like you're doing that to them, your day is going to come and somebody's going to do it to you. I'm not wishing it on you. That's just life, sweetie. That is just life. Now, on that note, I'm going to leave you be because I have to go and stake my tree down, which as I look right now is down on the ground again. So I'm going to get that stake down so that I can move on with the rest of my evening because I think I have a couple of more days and then we start the 12 days of Christmas and I have to make sure all of 
my podcasts are recorded and ready for me to release every day. So every day for 12 days, you're gonna get a podcast from me. So please make sure you all are subscribed to my podcast. Now, I will also share those with you because I'm still going to be doing, in case, because somebody asked me recently, yes, I'm still going to be doing my car conversations Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, even while I'm doing my 12 Days of Christmas podcast, because like I said, they will be pre-recorded, so I don't have to do those every day, okay? Now, if you are new to watching my videos, I want to say welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. If this is not your first rodeo, I want to say welcome back. Y'all know I miss you when I don't get a chance to see you. Go out there, you guys. Enjoy the rest of your evening with whatever it is you decide to do or not do. All I ask you to do is be safe and watch where you're going, okay? Promise me that you'll do that because I want you to come back here on Wednesday where I have another topic for you. Also, if you have a topic that you would like for me to talk about, please be sure to reach out to me. Again, the link tree, link in the bio, click on that and you'll find ways that you can get that to me. But let me know if you have a topic that you would like for me to talk about, okay? Maybe it's something that's, that's near and dear to you. Maybe you have a question. As you all know, I do wear the hat of a life coach. So if you have a question and you want me to to uh, walk, go through it with you, help you to figure out your next move, please reach out to me and let me know. And then if you don't, I'm gonna ask you if you don't mind, I'm gonna talk about the question. I won't reveal your name or anything about you. No one will know it's you always know that but I do ask your permission and I can share that on the platform because you never know if somebody else is going through the same thing okay so having said that you know the drill you know the spiel I love you all to the moon and back and there is nothing and I mean absolutely nothing that you could ever do about it because I love you and that will never change take care and we'll talk again on Wednesday